Welcome back everybody, whether you are visiting from Australia, America, Canada, anywhere. Welcome to the Junie Smalpy channel. And today's little briefing, what we're going to discuss, as usual, economics and some gold. Um, before we get to what I have here, let's try to recap what I read and looked at this morning, which was, obviously the Cyprus thing is still in the news. And it looks like now they're talking about 130,000 euro will be the mar um, bank accounts. Anything over that 130,000 euro mark is what they're going to go after and try to take their money. So they're, st they're still looking at some theft, some robbery as a solution to the crisis. They're forcing the people who didn't make the decisions to be fiscally irresponsible for the nation. And they're still looking to those people as being the ones that they're going to force to contribute to bail the nation out of its debt and contribute to the 13 billion euro bailout plan. So, you know, think the people in Cyprus right now, the Cypriots, feel bad for them. Uh, they still can't get their money out of the banks. It's still locked up. A uh, horrible situation could happen to any nation. Uh, anyone who thinks that their nation's immune to that type of behavior and that banks somehow somewhere else would act differently um, is just naive because it has happened in America as we all know and it actually happened worse believe it or not remember that the back in 33 when FDR um, took gold from US citizens and they raided safety deposit boxes and then they passed the gold seizure act and the trading with the enemy act and all those things um, immediately gold was revalued from $20 per ounce to $35 an ounce. That was a 60% reduction in the purchasing power of the US dollar and a 60%, 60% removal of everyone's worth from their savings. They destroyed the purchasing power and their accounts by 60% in doing that revaluation of gold and by removing gold from their possession so uh, Americans have been robbed similarly by that and uh, you know you kinda gotta hand it to the, to the Cypriot government and the banks there in the fact that at least they're upfront and honest about it they're like hey we're gonna take your money we're stealing your money right now we're calling it a bailout tax but they are coming out and saying hey we're taking your money whereas Americans suffer under the the imperial rule of inflation non-stop think about it we live under this soul-crushing fog of inflation constantly it's always happening they're always printing off money which we're gonna to get to in this article and our currency and our savings is always under attack and being devalued it's the inflation tax instead of calling it a bailout tax or a savings tax or whatever depositors tax like Cyprus is calling it there is such thing as the inflation tax let's take a break have a sip of coffee because that's gonna wear me out thinking about it so there is the inflation tax which you and I if you live in America we pay it all the time people in Argentina they're paying it all the time your currency is falling in value goods and services cost more the price of gas goes up the price of milk goes up the price of eggs goes up the price of gold goes up um, I remember buying a one ounce eagle of gold back in it was of course 1999 or such when there was the Browns down taking place I got paid from work working for my dad back then doing some construction and I uh, I went in and I bought some gold with my sit with my paycheck and I believe it or not, I think I was able to buy two ounces of gold at one time for like less than 500 bucks. Or it was like six, yeah. Like 600 bucks total, I think, for two ounces. Pretty incredible back then. All right. Well, let's move on to five reasons that gold will probably set all time records in 2013. Now this is one writer's opinion. Um, I might not agree entirely with that statement that it's going to set all-time records in 2013. 
I definitely think that it's going to reach, it has the potential to reach the previous highs of 18, basically 1900 almost, and it could surpass that. Um, I do think there's a lot of, I guess, banking energy and a lot of you know, hidden political agendas that try to go against gold and hold it down. But since two, let's review some facts here, as well as this gold chart. As you can see, this is gold from the year 2000 to the year 2012. There's the last high. Okay, since 2001, gold has been the single best performing asset for a record 12 straight years. In fact, the average return on gold was just shy of 18% a year. I try to tell friends that gold actually has a yearly yield or an increase in value that's pretty good. I mean, if you look at the two worst years it had, um, I know last year was 7%. That was a pretty poor performing year. It only went up 7% for the whole year, but still 7% on any savings account or mutual fund would be would be considered a pretty good yield or a pretty good increase in value. Um, before that, it was what, 2004, 5 or 6, somewhere in there. I know gold only rose 5.6%. I think that was probably 2006. Or seven somewhere in there was like 5.6 percent was the rise up okay so here's some reasons that gold's probably going to go up this year and you can take these to the bank there's a feverish growth of fiat money can't argue that usa europe china it's happening they're printing a lot of dollars they're printing a lot of yen yuan euros you name it there's a feverish demand for gold Perhaps not in America, but worldwide the demand for gold is rising. Central banks are continuing to print money. China and India, which in 2002 were responsible for 23% of world's gold demand, today nearly half of all demand at 47%. China and India are now consuming about half. And this is just the beginning. Less than 2% of all investment funds are invested in gold right now so they're not rushing into it yet but think of that for a moment less than two percent of all investment funds are invested in gold so please don't be one of those people that's calling gold a bubble this chart does not show a bubble if it did everyone would be getting into it this is an argument I try to use for people that try to call gold a bubble if gold was a bubble your neighbor would be buying it your uncle, your aunt, every cousin, every friend, and every co-worker would be talking about gold and buying it. The fact is, less than 1% of Americans alive right now have ever physically and personally seen or held a real gold coin. Less than 1% of Americans own any physical gold that is not in the form of jewelry which means that less than 1% of Americans are invested or participating in any form of gold or silverback savings, specifically gold. So you can't compare it to a housing bubble. You can't compare it to the dot-com bubble of 99 because back then, major percentages of the population were participating in those investment schemes. Because that's what they were, schemes. Goldsman, well, we'll get to that. Okay, so we nipped the we nipped the bubble in the bud. Even central banks have begun buying Russia and China, as well as the developing nations. Central banks are buying and hoarding gold. We've talked about this before. They went from being net sellers to net buyers of gold in the last several years. High demand meets short supply. From 1991 to 1999, there were 40, okay, not, not 43, there were 40 separate 3 million ounce or more gold discoveries. Okay, so that means there was 40 new discoveries around the world, that, and each one of those discoveries had about 3 million ounces of gold, possibly. From 2001 to 2009, there were half that, which I'm taking as there was only 20 discoveries 
that totaled three million ounces or more each. The industry as a whole, this is a very interesting fact. In 2011, the mining industry spent a record eight billion dollars searching for gold. Eight billion. It's a lot of money. And analysts are saying that they've been consistent. Okay, analysts lately, this is just a little fact I put at the end of this now. All the people that talk about gold and uh, its performance and where it's going, where it's been, a lot of the, the gold bears, um, the people on CNBC that think it's a bad idea to buy gold because they want you to buy their dumb stocks and stuff, a lot of them have been consistently wrong for the past more than a decade now, over 12 years. There were people back in, let's go back to the chart, there were people back here that said, gold's a bad idea, bad idea, bad idea, get rid of it, don't buy it, sell it here, that's the peak, don't, sell, don't buy it, sell it, they were saying right here at this peak, get rid of gold. Bad idea, bad idea, bad. And then it just came, the whole time, from here all the way to here, people were being told not to invest in gold. So, consider that. Here's an interesting little chart. Okay, it's kind of blurry because I'm trying to save ink, so I'm doing the uh, draft version when I print these off for you. Now, these are 3 million ounce discoveries, and it's showing how they're becoming scarce. The grayer ones are primarily gold only discoveries. The yellow ones are copper and gold. So you can see back in 91, we got 92, 93, 94, pretty pretty healthy amount of discoveries taking place. And then and then and on the left hand side you'll see that's the in millions of ounces. That bar there. Down here's the year. Then all of a sudden in 98 it drops off and look at this it's just kind of petering out and I've read this before a lot of the easy gold's gone a lot of the major discoveries um, are being tapped out uh, they're not finding as much as they used to so remember gold the amount of gold in the world there's a fixed limited amount there's only so much of this on the planet and yet there's an unlimited amount of uh, paper. They can just recycle that stuff. Print off as much of it as they want. So, But you know that. Again, preaching to the choir. This is more of a confidence builder right here, what we're talking about today. Those of you guys that might need a little pep talk. You've been, you're, getting, you're getting sick of seeing gold hanging around 1600 Just look at it as a good buying opportunity. All right, you can't ignore inflation. Demand for gold as a store of value has surged amid, amid speculation of inflation. And I wouldn't even say it's speculation anymore. Gold is real money. Remember, what is real money? Even Alan Greenspan wrote an article back in the 60s. You can look it up on his definition of money and uh, the role of gold. And as Aristotle said 2,000 years ago or more, more than that, that money must be durable, it must be portable, and it must be divisible. And it must be consistent and have intrinsic value. Okay, so it's no accident that the most common basis for money in all of human history has been gold. For 65 centuries, gold has been money. After all, only gold meets all five of those requirements. And it's only in the past century that fiat money has supplanted gold or gold-backed currencies on a worldwide basis. Fiat currencies like the dollar are just a relatively recent and failing experiment in economics. There's a long list of expired and no longer valuable paper currencies. Just remember, whenever we talk about this, just picture that hundred trillion dollar Zimbabwe note I've showed you. So let's get back to some of the reasons gold's going up. Invest in, investment demand is exploding, even though they're not right now. The, the percentage of investment firms in gold is low. There's there is a move with large institutional investors and hedge funds and pension funds that are making increasingly large allocations to gold, as are individual investors. One of them being Pimco's. 
Bill Gross. You'll see him sometimes on the news. Central banks are loading up on gold. As we've discussed, central banks are becoming net buyers. According to the World Gold Council, central banks bought 254.2 tons in the first half of 2012 and may add close to 500 tons for all of 2012. What's more, the IMF or the International Monetary Fund says Russia added 18.6 metric tons of gold in July. South Korea bought 16 tons. <sighs> and that's a 30% increase. Okay. Interesting stuff. Why did I put that on there? Number nine call. Yeah, it might have been a joke from that guy. A currency crisis is looming. Anyways, we all know that what goes up must come down, stocks, etc. And some people say, try to say that that's true with gold, but with a currency crisis looming and possible hyperinflation, etc., um, being that we're I just see gold going much higher, and these are the reasons we're talking about right now. Five years into the crisis, the U.S., Europe, and countless other economies are still struggling. That's why the European Central Bank and the Fed have unveiled plans to fight the crisis and reduce borrowing costs. The ECB president, Mario Draghi, has since announced an unlimited bond-buying program for distressed Euro-area nations, while Fed Chairman Ben Bernanke has committed to another round of so-called quantitative easing and that reality has ignited a crisis of confidence about fiat currencies in the minds of many investors and governments. The European Central Bank President Mario Draghi has since announced an unlimited bond buying program for distressed euro area nations while Fed Chairman Ben Bernanke has committed to another round of so-called quantitative easing. And that reality has ignited a crisis of confidence about fiat currencies in the minds of many investors and governments. The ongoing sovereign debt crisis in the Eurozone underpinned European investors' enduring conviction in gold's capital preservation properties. Demand for bars and coins from retail investors posted a 15% year-on-year increase to $77.6 trillion. 19% higher than the five-year quarterly average. Oh, tons, sorry. Why am I saying trillion? 77.6 tons. 19% higher than the five-year quarterly average of 65.2 tons. Because remember, at around 900 or I think it's 880 or $900 an ounce, there was only $4.3 trillion worth of gold on the entire planet, ever mind. So there's not a lot of it. But it looks like these guys are, uh, so, they're, so they're buying. It's good. Good for them. The three stages of a gold buying mania. Stage one, currency devaluation. Stage two, investment demand. Stage three, a culminating mania, a culminating mania buying spree. We're still in stage one. So as many people have said, I, you know, if this was a baseball game, we're still in the first inning. It has yet even to begin, or to rear, reality has yet to rear its ugly head. Inflation and the fall of the Roman Empire. This was an article, I was going to remind you guys, I put that note in there just so, if any of you guys like history, if you like Rome, um, if you're a coin collector, you like coinage, and you like the, the way coins tie into history and ec economics, this article will uh, really make you happy. You'll, you'll enjoy reading it, it's great. So... That's why I put this on here for you. Let me know if you do read it and you've gotten this far in the video, so you're part of the hundred thousandth of one percent um, that's still paying attention, is still watching this and sipping coffee, listening to my boring tone, then you will find this interesting. So let me know what you think of it as we wrap this up. Okay, it's called Inflation and the Fall of the Roman Empire. It's by Professor Joseph Peden. It's a 50-minute lecture that he gave it um, in Houston, Texas. And it did it, uh, 
He gave it at the Seminar on Money and Government in Houston, Texas. You can find that if you Google it online. Um, I think a guy named Art Bentko has a blog where he posts a link of the whole written um, lecture. So you can read, you can actually read it. You don't have to listen to it. You can read the whole lecture. So it's very good. Um, as we close, just remember, keep stacking. And remember that as the uh, devaluation continues to occur, the value of these physical gold will go up. And that even with the fall of the Roman Empire, you can pretty much track it in its coinage. Because there came a time where they stopped minting gold, or it became very scarce. They began to reduce the quantity and the percentage of gold and silver in coinage to the point where they got to plating coins to make them look silver. What does that remind you of? The coins were silver plated, but underneath was just bronze. And then it got to the point where all they were issuing was bronze. Lots of bronze currency. They completely devalued and destroyed the coinage and the currency of Rome, and then it collapsed. So I'd really encourage all of you to read that article, and uh, as you read it, pay attention to the course Rome took in coinage, and where it eventually ended up leading them as an empire. So, again, have a great day. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for viewing. And for the regulars out there, hello. Thanks for stopping by. And uh, as always, enjoy your comments and the time you guys spend in discussing these topics, these issues. If anything else comes up, I'll be sure to post a video up. Keep my eye on the news, finger on the pulse, as usual. Finger on the pulse, trying to figure out what's going on out there on my days off and uh, you know as usual when I work it's, there's gonna be interruptions in when I can post a video for you but uh, keep paying attention thanks for stopping by